Welcome to our exotic tropical boom town of Honolulu, Hawaii. And we're dating the year 1969. And which person could be more characteristic for this era, uh, this golden era in America, than the person you're going to see now uh, on the screen from the first picture? Well, Not so it's, it's, it's going to be John F. Kennedy, but wait a minute, it also looks a little like our co-host is Soto, so maybe there's a little bit of both true. What's, <laughs> what's the point here, DeSoto? What's the point? Well, that's not John F. Kennedy. That is it's DeSoto not. Brown in 1969 when he was getting ready to go to his second year of boarding school in Connecticut from here in Honolulu, and the boarding school he was going to was the same one that John F. Kennedy graduated from in 1935, at which my father knew him as another student at the school at the time. Mm -hmm. He was there a year before. He right? was there, well, actually he was a year after. Okay, so, okay. so Kennedy was a year mm -hmm. ahead of okay. my father. But let's let's see what's what's the relevance to all of this. Well, and, and then, so yeah, so let's do the next picture. Because then Kennedy, the real Kennedy, came here. In that 1963. Was in 1963. But you guys didn't go. Why? Probably not. Well, I don't. Um, uh, my family and I did not go to see Kennedy's motorcade when he came here, probably because my parents were Republicans and Kennedy was a Democrat. But uh, as you can see, he's riding through Waikiki on Kalakaua Avenue, and he came out here unexpectedly for just a really short visit for a mayor's conference mm -hmm. and had a motorcade with thousands of people watched him in the same Lincoln Continental convertible in which he was shot just months after his visit to Honolulu. Exactly. That's kind of an astonishing and so, uh, disturbing a, thing. A, a tragic fame, this right. car. And cars have been serving as the vehicle for exploration ever since we did a we did the shows, and this is also our American or our Honolulu top four of Steve Au's yes. architecture, yes. and this is number four, which goes back in time to nine to the to the late '60s mm -hmm. uh, here in Honolulu. Mm -hmm. So this has been very car centric days, right? Yes. And and America had their Sunset Boulevards where it was cruising, and this is certainly Kalakaua. But then Kalakaua, when you keep going uh, ever side west-wise, it turns into Ala Moana Boulevard. Mm -hmm. So the building we're going to talk about, we already see in the background, but mostly people don't see it in this iconic shot that you took. But number three, people drive by and probably won't even uh, recognize the building. And before they actually see the building, they, uh, you know, this is what the building is actually about, right? The building yeah. is about parking. The whole side is basically undermined with parking. And what's interesting is, as you pointed out, this is a protected parking lot from the wind and the rain. It's also got open air to the easy breezy, as you like to say, but it's also hidden. Mm -hmm. You don't see it from the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until you drive in, you aren't even aware that there is a major parking lot under this, underneath this e building. Excellent point. If you, This is why when you look at that picture, it's very cleverly, it's half submerged in the ground, a couple of feet, and then there's this balustrade panel. So you can actually watch out while people from outside won't see the cars or barely the top of the cars. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very cleverly designed. One I, of the best parking garage from its sort of, as you can see here, you don't see any you cars. You don't see it. It's all in the shadow, right? And it's, and it's right where my thumb is, right exactly. where my thumb is right there, is the parking lot. Exactly. Hidden. So So number three is how, uh, Picture I took a couple days ago, uh, which um, basically shows how we mostly drive by, right? We don't even recognize the car, uh, the, the cars we recognize, but not the building. Right. And we might say, well, from this day and age where everything is about America's superstar and people of no talent become stars or reality TV, you know, stars become president and stuff like that, right? Yeah. So in, in these days, this, uh, this building might seem strange because it's so humble, it's so right. subtle, it's so nondescript. It's unassuming. And I would say that is a quality. Uh, America was really good at background architecture. Not every building wanted to wanted to stand out. Exactly. But if you take the minute, which you did, uh, number four, which is also a permanent background picture, you can really see how sort of hovering, how horizontal yes. the building is. Very much so. And it is an extremely unlike much of what's around it today. And that's something we're going to get to at the end. It's not vertical. It's horizontal. Mm -hmm. So what you see are parallel horizontal lines and something that we're going to get to is it looks like it is just one 
very plain box, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but in fact, there's a good deal more to it mm -hmm. than and you can see from this. Yeah. And finally, if you guys haven't found out, if your eyes aren't good enough like mine, getting bad, you know, you can see that little signage there. So go to the next picture, and we can see it clearly how the project is called, right? That is the Ward Plaza. And it is part of the entire Ward uh, properties mm -hmm. that are on either side, in this case, of Ward Avenue. Mm -hmm. This is across the street from Ward Warehouse, which mm -hmm. we've already discussed. Yeah. And the Ward properties extended all the way from King Street all the way down to Kewalo Basin. And that's why all of those things today are still, some of them are still named mm -hmm. Ward after the family that originally mm -hmm. owned this property mm -hmm. in the 19th century mm -hmm. and up until fairly recently in the 21st century mm -hmm. when it was sold. And where the sign was is actually sort of the, the, the back side of the building, although that's probably not a correct way to call it. But when we go to number six, is so if you don't come and are mm -hmm. someone who works there and you pull straight into this opulent parking garage, but you might be a visitor, mm -hmm. and it might be raining, which it does at times here, there is a sort of driveway here where uh, it's sort of very sort of almost like uh, flamboyant, you can say. It's a port cochere. Oh, that is the term. And it's, and it, but it is intrinsically part of the building. It's not just sort of a decorative add-on. Mm -hmm. You can see that, as you said earlier, it protrudes out of the building and it's very much integral to the yeah. building in its appearance and in its entire structure. Yeah, and so when you pull under, and let's imagine in your 1960s Lincoln mm -hmm. convertible, you yes. pull under and the next picture, then you make a stop and you get out of your car, you're shaded from the sun and from the rain, and you basically walk up this very wide staircase and it gives you this sort of very, very sort of heroic feeling I, we had when we were there the last couple of times to shoot these pictures, right? Yeah. And you also wanted to point out the characteristic, the juxtaposition of the man-made and the natural environment, right. right? Right, and we're gonna be seeing a good deal more of that, but you'll notice the tree on the right of that picture. Well, we'll see another tree that uh, we can talk about in a uh -huh. minute. So, so maybe now we need a little bit of orientation, and that's why these uh, owners put up some signs, and so we've been uh, using them as sort of a navigational device in the last couple of shows, because also in these projects, which are like the uh, Gesamtkunstwerk, the total piece of artwork, where the architect actually designed everything, yeah. right, including the signage. Correct. And we looked at the very rugged signage of Warehouse yes. in the 70s, yes. just painting on wood, yes. whereas this one here, number eight, is very delicately uh, yes. designed. And you can see the signage here is sort of geometrically uh, sort of uh, the, the type has been crafted and, and sort of customized, tailored to the building, right? And that, and I can tell you, I can clearly remember when this building was new, how distinctive that Ward Plaza uh, typeface is mm -hmm. and how unusual it was and still is very distinctive. Yeah, yeah. And here also shows, so these are the, the, the floor plans for orientation here. And when we say it's, it's a building, that's actually not quite correct, right? Yeah, it's actually got three different, or I, I see four sections in the, in the central part of the second floor. Mm -hmm. But it, it, again, as I said, from the exterior, you see what looks like one big horizontal building. Mm -hmm. In this floor plan, you can see that, in fact, there are a lot of different spaces. It is not one monolithic thing. Mm -hmm. And that little thing that you say is almost the fourth one. It's at the, the second to right picture and the middle picture at the bottom uh, gets that's, us to the next D. picture. That's D. And this is the next picture. This is actually above that um, uh, you know, point where you get so majestically dropped off. It's right. not just, as you said, a, a canopy, which there are plenty of good ones in Honolulu, actually perfect ones that we're also gonna do a show about in right. the future. But this one here is, is very practical because there's also a utilizable space above, right? right? Now notice too, Again, horizontal and a very stark and uh, man-made environment, but down in the left-hand corner you see the tree. And this is a clipped tree that's been clipped into a dome shape. Mm -hmm. If you look at the front of the Ward Plaza, you will mm -hmm. see from mm -hmm. Ward Avenue some very distinctive, similarly clipped banyan trees that have that rounded okay. dome shape. Yeah, yeah. Now in one case, on one hand, that's nature juxtaposed against the starkness of the monolithic mm -hmm. building, but at the same time, as you pointed out, it's a very controlled nature yeah, yeah. because it's not just growing wildly, mm -hmm. it is shaped 
mm -hmm. geometrically mm -hmm. as well. And these, sh these same type of trees are also found clipped similarly at Ward Warehouse mm -hmm. across the street. Mm -hmm. So it's a very sort of a neo-baroque approach, Correct. With, uh, sort of geometralizing right. Uh, right. nature. So the building, one almost gets a little bit confused in a positive way, and the, one of the first things after we both send us out visiting it, visiting it separate from each other, you said, Martin, it reminds me of a piece of artwork yes. of some years before from yes. 1953, which is one of your favorite ones, and yes. if we can see that next right. in the next picture. And this is a picture by M.C. Escher, which is called Relativity. And as a kid in the 1960s, when I first saw this, I was incredibly intrigued by all the different vistas, mm -hmm. the different planes, the different sources of gravity, and also the fact that not only are these people are all walking in different directions within this space, but you feel like you want to see mm -hmm. into where these other places mm -hmm. are. You see glimpses of through doors and windows that you kind of want to go to, mm -hmm. and that's what I think. Ward Plaza has. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's exciting. It's an adventure, right? It is exactly an adventure you want to explore. Yeah, yeah. And the next picture shows us one of the many plateaus, I guess we can say. This is the central plaza, the central plateau, uh, which is basically a white landscape. And what intrigued me is that unless you know, and, and even if you know, you forget that this is actually the parking deck. Right. I mean, this is a landscape, this is a pristinely right. and cleverly, which has a lot of occupational quality with these custom-made benches, mm -hmm. as you said, with this nature encased in mm -hmm. these troughs, mm -hmm. right, very strategically placed. Mm -hmm. And it's a very generous kind of landscape. You almost forget that Alamoana Boulevard, right. which is close and loud, is there. Right. Because right. you're above the noise level. And you have walls. You have walls that keep you within a, kind of, a sort of a safe space, mm -hmm. sort of a protected mm -hmm. space. Exactly. And we'll see that as we continue. It, we do. But then when you get closer and get to the buildings, uh, there is uh, the next picture. Um, I, I call this using the German word gestalt rather than design. Um, this is shelter uh, gestalt, the whole building. That basically the overhangs that are character characteristic for the building follow you while you progress yes. and process through the through yes. the building. Yes, they do. Yes, right? they do. And again, protection mm -hmm. from elements and also feeling of. Uh, sort of a, a feeling of coziness, yeah, if you will, because uh -huh. it's not a huge open expanse that you feel unprotected. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have shelter. And to that degree, we started out, and I said, this is uh, our exotic tropical Honolulu. This is what makes this building exotically tropical, right? Because mm -hmm. it's aware of yes. the things in the tropics to take care of, which right. is shelter you from the sun and the rain, right? right? And the building does that in a, in a very sort of successful way. Agreed. Right? And not oppressive. No, absolutely not. Uh, number 13. Uh, this is so American to me because I found that these sort of almost institutional buildings always have this sort of institutional identity and where uh, you said before, you know, the, the servant, this is sort of a Lucan, uh, you know, uh, methodology. The, the servant spaces basically get consolidated in the building, but they also get celebrated. We talked about the water dispenser that is so American. This is this courtesy of like, we don't let you get uh, dehydrated, right. right? You said right. in Germany, not so much, right? Right, right, right. In other countries, it's not, we don't, they don't offer free water all the time. Exactly. And you pointed that out. Exactly. You, you know that better than I. Yeah, yeah. But it's also very uh, efficient and effective to centralize the core. Yes. You don't have it, you know, everywhere. People have. And it's almost like the outhouse way back in the mm -hmm. early settler days, right? Mm -hmm. When you put mm -hmm. it a little bit away because of certain, you know, reasons. And so here you, you go on this little trip to the, to the bathroom block and you certainly meet people and you can chat with people. Uh, it's it's very very elegantly um, yes. you know gestalted yeah yeah, yeah. And, and but utilitarian as well uh, absolutely yeah and so the next picture is uh, probably sort of the most uh, iconic ones that I was intrigued by immediately that uh, where else uh, there is this sort of coveredness and this sort of protectiveness and and sort of the the landscapes are, are layered. Yes. Um, almost like tectonic plates yes. stacked on top of each other. Yes. But then there are these cracks, there are these voids that right. actually bring light and rain and sun down once again into these places. There are for people and for plants right. and for animals. 
Mm -hmm. And you can already see um, a, a glimpse there. Next to the tree, there, there is actually someone there. Right. And one of the earliest shows we did is about the uh, international marketplace, yes. CIS. So yes. the former one and the other one. And after the show, uh, we realized something really sort of critical that uh, there's a sign at the entrance and and if you come like at 8 30 in the morning we heard you're going to be uh, asked to leave and come back at 10 because that's when it's opened so this is like the the the, per, the privatization of, of 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 public space which is owned publicly and it pretends to be public but it's obviously private whereas this here is a commercial building this is private property usually you would see signs no trespassing not so much here the building is actually welcomes almost like trespassing in in a, in a decent way and the mm -hmm. next picture uh, number 15 is I think I, I the guy was yeah. just there and you know he was sleeping so I didn't even couldn't even ask him right and <laughs> what are you that, doing here isn't that telling something right? yeah this right. is the building is is holding true its promise to be a civic, welcoming building, although it's of private nature, private typology. And, and as I was saying, too, there, there's a sense of shelter and a sense of comfort in that you feel protected. Mm-hmm and Absolutely. not exposed. Absolutely. In a good way. And, and I have never seen, when you were there, have you, I have not seen security. No, and I didn't see, I agree, that I didn't feel like there was in this oppressive sense yeah, of, yeah. get out of here, what yeah. are you doing here? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. I've, no, I haven't I, seen I, it, I it might be there, but it just seems like, there's also no trashing, yeah. the whole the whole urban nomad thing, I'm surprised the urban nomads haven't discovered it, no, and, uh, and like, like to settle there, and there is probably some enforcement that they don't, I, so most yes, likely. I'm sure they do. But again, once again, it's it's um, it's it's pleasant and and maybe it, it should open itself up to some qualified nomads who say well you know we would inhabit it in a in a in a decent I'll, way we'll let them deal with put that. up our tippies you yeah know? No, I don't I don't think so and bring in our shopping carts I don't think so yeah, well in a civilized way I'm really intrigued okay. by that by okay. that thought you can you can talk to the management about that I, I will do okay. I'm happy all right. to all right all right <laughs> so the next picture um, once again we talked about exotic mm -hmm. and the nature of exotic is is sort of in a scientific way yeah. but it's also in a cultural way yes. there's a sort of the, this mystic because because uh, you know exotic is a perceptional thing yes, and you're the is. utmost expert in that field yeah and exotic at one point you please do a show about exotic okay right all right all right well exotic uh, exotic ness is based purely as you said on your perception mm -hmm. from where you are coming from mm -hmm. what is exotic to you is not going to be exotic mm -hmm, to me mm -hmm. and vice versa but yep. that's getting that's getting yeah, rather yeah. Um, so as you call me out I find this exotic because there is a sort of this mystical kind of a little almost like an urban domesticized jungle yes. there's yes. this there's yes. this plants there's a tree there's shade and then there's a human creature mm -hmm. which is sort of almost like camouflaging and this is a guy who actually this was Saturday when I was there that what warehouse has this farmer's market market and they sell flowers, potted flowers. Right, right. He bought orchids and he was like looking at them there. Right. So I found this really beautiful, almost like to good to be true, almost like staged. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. Well what the, I think in the next picture too, one of the things that, that we can talk about here is not only that there there's potential exotica, but it's contained. Mm -hmm. It's within mm -hmm. structures. So it's mm -hmm. within these rectangular or round structures that hold the plants and the exoticness and the nature mm -hmm. within yeah, the yeah. otherwise rectangular or man-made yeah, structure. Yeah, exactly. So we see these asparagus ferns looking mm -hmm. really kooky and weird and green and reaching out. Oh, is that how they're called? What yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a type oh, wow. of asparagus wow. fern, but not really a fern, it's asparagus, yeah, yeah, but yeah. again, within this wild, strange green thing, yeah, yeah. it's all held within safely, so it's not threatening, mm -hmm. within that uh, well-kept gray enclosure yeah. within uh, something that matches the rest of the structure. Absolutely. I want to take a chance to reintroduce that term of, of, of tropical brutalism. And one thing that my son Joey, when he was here, he was so intrigued by sort of the contrast of the Volcrete, so mm -hmm. the local ingredients, concrete mm -hmm. and the green. Mm -hmm. And something I know from Embarcadero Center in San Francisco, right. which, which has the same sort of phenomenon, which is really sort of you know, specific about the place, and it's something that's unique. So mm -hmm. it's it's amazing that we haven't continued that. And at the end of the show, we'll make a right. proposal to Correct. do so. Correct. And and that is true from the macro level, but it's also it goes down to the very micro. Yes, and it and does. one of my rules of thumbs of good architecture is the closer you get, the better it gets. And this is in contrast to today, which the shittier it gets the closer you get to it, right? Mm, Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. And and so if you go to number eighteen. 
this this proves it, Ryan. Right, and this is a very typical type of brutalistic uh, finish. And mm -hmm. brutalism is a type of uh, architecture, school of architecture from the night, primarily 50s, 60s, and 1970s. Mm -hmm. And in this case, what we see is concrete that's got these embedded little chunks of Hawaiian basalt. Mm -hmm. And as you pointed out, this has to be created by hand. In other words, it's got to be cast, and then somebody has got to spray water against that yeah, surface yeah. to get to, the cement off. Because to get the cement, cement off spray to expose the that aggregate. Mm -hmm. that aggregate inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is typical of brutalism, and it's also a particularly local product. Yeah. And it also, as you just said, on one hand you see it at the macro level, but mm -hmm. when you come close to it, mm -hmm. you can see that individual uh -huh. texture. Yeah, and it's all yeah, different every yeah. time. Very much a brutalist uh, yeah, yeah. type of attribute. Yeah. And then there's an in-between level, which is kind of the tectonic uh, composition. Yeah. That's the next picture. Whereas things that look basically monolithic and stereotomic, so like, like they're almost cast out of one piece. Right. In fact, when you look up close, and that's the next picture which I did, got on my knees or on my back to take that picture here, right. you see it's not, Ryan. Correct. So that is not part of the structure. Those are panels mm -hmm. which have been applied to the exterior of the structure for the decoration, for the appearance. Mm -hmm. And as you pointed out, these are nicely detailed to the point where the corners are cut at a 45 degree angle so that they will fit together nicely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, they're, and it isn't, it they're isn't mostly, sloppy. Uh, yeah, and that's quite the effort. You either have to, again, take a saw and do it. Most likely you do, you do your mold, you do your yeah. form like that, and that's right. an extra effort you have sure. to go through. Right. And and so that's, that's pretty remarkable. And uh, gets even better. The next picture here is, is one of my favorite details of the building. And it's, it's a building that has sort of, it's sort of inherent. The, the detailing is not uh, applicative. Mm -hmm. It's not decorative. Correct. Right? It's inherent it's, it's to the building. It's integral to it. Exactly. So has integrity. So at some point, you've got these stratospheric stacked landscapes. Yeah. So water comes down, and they need to basically come down, right? right. right. Falling gravity. Right. And the water's got a drain. And you pointed out here that this is a drain that is, the water will come down off this drain, but mm -hmm. then drain onto the next level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's almost fountain-like in that it isn't it isn't in confined yeah, into yeah. a drain pipe. Yeah. It's almost part of the visual aspect of watching it rain, experiencing the rain. And that reminds me of one exotic visitor here who had some impact that we're going to talk about later when we get into the uh, uh, tropical brutalism. That's Lawrence Halprin. Oh, okay. Lawrence Halprin okay. was, and, and there is a little fountain he did, which is not a fountain anymore. We get to there later. I got a picture of it. Don't worry. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Because, yeah. And, and so, so going back to that picture number 21 it has this very poetic you can see where the water drains is where you get the stain yeah the concrete Correct. gets stain so this is the difference this building ages and grays patina as well yes so there's no there's no downspout mm -hmm. there's no gutter that mm -hmm. can be beat up and looks right. ugly and nasty right. right right they just let it be the the flow and right. the, look at this little sort of two cold so that child hat cannot go through there's right. this little rebar sticking out so right. it's like almost you expose a rebar. I found this amazing, and I see some Lucan in there, you know, and I see uh, this is uh, this is pretty cool. And and one gets even better to to the next detail here, which is the last one of our detail exploration here. Uh, look at that staircase, Ryan. Yeah, and what I like is, first of all, there is the rough texture of the concrete, the aggregate that you can see. Mm -hmm. It has this other form connected to it, which is the the bars of the of the piping which mm -hmm. have been formed, mm -hmm. and then those wooden planks. Yeah, yeah. So you've got a bunch of different stuff going on. I also like the vertical bars that hold mm -hmm, the, the mm -hmm. wooden planks in place. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. a whole it's a whole elaborate structure. Yeah. And this is just a utilitarian uh, mm -hmm. thing of an exterior stairway, yeah, yeah. but it's sculptural. It's very cultivatedly crafted. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And, and intriguing to look at. So at this point, we've got five minutes left. We've got to come with some bad news. The next picture, you already said it's a hard use property, and yeah. it's actually the last one, the last block yes. uh, on, on the Eva side. Correct. And, and that's what's coming. The, those big high rises in the in the distance are approaching, and exactly. as you said, they're walking towards us. They're marching toward us, yeah. and yeah. they will occupy the site yeah. of yeah. Ward Warehouse as well as Ward Plaza. Exactly. So a demolition hasn't absolutely been precisely announced for this for Ward Warehouse. It is in August this year, but uh, it's been announced for Ward Plaza as well. And so, um, you know, we we just gonna we just want to point out that. Um, 
uh, we were not against evolution because evolution is a good thing if one believes in Darwin yes, theory. Yes, and, and one cannot stop it either. Exactly. Whether you believe in it but, or not, but, it still But happens. we want to be maybe you know critical to arguments. Whereas war warehouse is told it's falling apart. I was told epoxy is going to hold it together. Certain degree, yes, because of deferred maintenance. I just did a show for Howard as a guest host. That was a topic, right? And you heard the same about this building here, which I would say is 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 not true because the building um, still looks looks pretty pretty exactly. fine. Exactly, and right? I don't. I'm not an architect. I'm not a maintenance person. But, but I am. But you are. Um, <laughs> the the newspaper article which I just read yeah, this yeah, in yeah. a short time ago said that because yeah. there were maintenance issues, they were looking towards demolishing so, Ward Plaza. So um, we also said, well, we had a picture of you to uh, sort of um, uh, encourage the zeitgeist um, memory. We won't show one of me because I was three years young or old, a toddler, what's the point? But we want to show the next picture of a project of ours that shows a like-mindedness. This is in Hanover, Germany again. It's 12 years, young or old. It's a community plaza center. It uses the same uh, material, concrete, uh, concrete, precast concrete. But again, I mean, this just shows my sympathy, obviously, but what's that good for, right? Now the position is it's going to be torn down, so let's go away from that, mm -hmm. but go to our vehicle of uh, exploration and thought, the next picture, because the, this project got an award, uh, the lowest sex in these states, also the highest award on a state level. And the head of the jury is from one town over, and this might look like uh, one of the Pier 38, but it's another uh, harbor town on the other side of the world. This is one town over from my hometown. This is Hamburg. And this architect, gentleman architect, drives this car. And so, there's the so same car. There is JFK's, well, not the exact no, one. No, no, but it's the same but a, model. But a sibling from 61. Right. What does it tell us? Because he's the coolest guy driving that, and I had the right. pleasure to be cruised around, and you get the look. I mean, not me, but the car, the car. right? Yeah, sure. So, so what does it tell us? It is still cool, right? Yes. And it's cool because it has integrity, right? Yep, it, it does. It, it, and, it, it, and so that, that's the point we want to point out, whereas the next picture is, uh, is, is showing um, my 93 Lincoln Town Car that is in the car heaven because it didn't hold up. It wanted to be in the good old days, but it isn't. Yeah. So here we wish Lincoln the best. Uh, this is Matthew McConaughey promoting the newest model. But I also got to say uh, to my um, uh, thanks to my son Joey, who was uh, about to write his master thesis in automotive engineering uh, and management. Hi, hi, Joey. He learned in school that today is the car makers make cars to fail after a certain time versus to last. Right. So with that one, we want to be because we're out of time. We want to spend the last uh, not even existing minutes going through four pictures and saying, well, what if like we say we're going to be vertical, but we want to stay true to the name and the term of the place, which is Plaza. Right. And this is a proposal here, if we can go back to 27, to make a groundscape plaza. 28 is vertical circulation plazas. Number 29 is streetscape plazas. And last but not at least, we have a skyscape plaza. And this is Primitiva, how she could be currently developed by uh, my uh, emerging colleagues and myself. And just as an inspiration, you, you can do, you can go with the flow and with the times, right, and develop differently, but you might as well sort of obey to the same uh, right. philosophy and, and means and methods. Because, because what's there right now has a very distinctive look, mm -hmm. and it can be echoed, it can be used as inspiration for what comes after. Um, and if one of the things that we mentioned was uh, maybe reuse the wood from Ward Warehouse, in yeah. the project that you just saw. The evolution so. of tradition, and with that, thank you very much, my co-host. And welcome. we're going to be back in about a month. I mean, we're going to be back yeah. with looking at another uh, commercial mercantile typology. That's right. So see you then. Thanks for watching.